sometimes as I roam about on a break from writing, I tell myself, like a parent reassuring a child, that I am the author of a whole shelf of books. It was always my dream to take up a shelf in the library, and I'm almost at that point, having written maybe a dozen titles, edited a half dozen more, and contributed 10 more introductions to picture books or other authors reissued texts that get my name put in however small type on the cover. <laughs> you would think that anyone who had already generated so prolific a corpus, we will defer the question of quality for the moment, <laughs> or indefinitely, would be mature enough not to have to resort to such petty incantations. But such is not the case. I need to pat myself on the back constantly because without this reminder of my literary output, I fear I will vaporize. The negative corollary of this phenomenon is that every time I finish a book, I become quite morbid and think I'm going to die soon. <laughs> it is as though having cleared the desk, I no longer have an excuse to live. Actually, even before finishing a book, when I am still in the final stages, I begin to have the hit by a truck fantasy. <laughs> Walking through the streets of Brooklyn, I ask myself if my manuscript has reached a point sufficiently far along that were I hit by a truck <laughs> and killed instantly, it could still be published with a short <laughs> note, of course. <laughs> with a short note, of course, by my widow or editor explaining the circumstances. I brood about where I left my manuscript and if it is in an obvious enough place on my desk <laughs> or the piles of papers beside the desk so that my wife could find it after she had gone through the necessary grief and burial period <laughs> or so that she could locate it on my computer and initiate the search for a publisher assuming she liked it enough not to suppress it. <laughs> One can never be sure about such things. Then the day comes when I have definitely finished the manuscript, for better or worse, and it is a book or a potential book. I take it to the photocopy shop and have three copies made. I give one to a friend and another to my agent. The third I leave with my wife, and I begin to think of death. <laughs> Sometimes these thoughts take the form of fantasizing approaching some friend and asking him to become my literary executor. This fantasy of the chosen friend is shot through with Hawthorne Melville unconsummated homoeroticism. <laughs> Except the brunt of this romanticized turn in the relationship will start from the moment I die, <laughs> necrophiliacly, so to speak. <laughs> Who will love me enough, once I become a ghost, to put up with the bother of being my executor? First, I have to go through a rigorous analysis of all my friendships and ask which one of them I trust the most. Many have let me down in the past. <laughs> These are easily eliminated. <laughs> but I must also cross off the list those dependable friends who are older than myself and who might not be around long enough to agitate, <laughs> to, agitate to keep my books in print. Or even more arduous a task, get the out-of-print ones reissued. There's also a large stock of my uncollected work, journalism, film criticism, book reviews, ephemeral essays, poems, juvenilia, which a really alert industrious literary trustee might find a way to see into print. <laughs> How to locate all that material? I've made the problem easier by tossing new pieces as I write them into a folder, which I keep on the ledge of my bookcase, but the process is very unsystematic, and to compile a full dossier of my unpublished work, the chosen literary executor would have to bow into my files, a process that could easily take half a year. What matters is that if the friend is successful, he will have added to my literary shelf, my library shelf, which is all I care about. The irony is that I have still not gotten around to composing a will, though my wife and my mother-in-law regularly nag me that it is my responsibility to do so. Writing a will is certainly practical, but this step would entail envisioning my extinction. And while I am happy to do so as an exercise in self-pity <laughs> or as an act of Gothic imagination, I am less drawn to the idea of making life easier for those who will survive me. <laughs> 